19, his empty house was dissolved. For building not made by man's hand, the body that was the king was dissolved. Every time in dialysis, that was dissolved. Now he has a new body. Praise the Lord. Oh, God. Praise the Lord. It was recorded in the book of Job, chapter 40, 12 to 50, and I quote. So man lies down and riseth not until heaven be no more. They shall not wake nor be raised but of their sleep. All that I will hide me, you will hide me in the grave, that thou wilt keep me secret until the wrath is past. And thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me if a man dies. He shall live again. All the days of my appointment time, I will wait till my chief is gone. Thou shalt call and I will answer thee. Thou shalt desire the work of thy hand. And the who that Job speaking there, he will wait. And you gotta wait for your change. My brothers and sisters, especially the bereaved family, we are gathered here on this beautiful day. Yesterday it was rainy sun. To show our respect to our father, to our grandfather, to our brother, to our uncle, our neighbor, our friend. We, some of us, come with mixed emotion. I know that the children they sit there hard, but you gotta reach back and find solace, not a man. But in God. We are grateful that there will be no more long hours of visiting, visiting and waiting to see the doctors. And the lady talk about the dialysis at the hospital. And all his aches and pains are gone. But we are sad because we has he has been taken from us. And we will not hear that voice of wisdom no more. Yes, Brother Johnson had an appointment, not with the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Dr. Hubert Minnis, nor the Governor General of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, the most honorable C.A. Smith, nor did he have an appointment with the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, nor the Queen of England. No, his appointment was with the great ruler of the universe who called him home. This appointment he could not miss. Even if he tried, he could not miss it. For his time was set not by man. Are you hearing me? Explain to us the penalty after death. Anybody know? What is the penalty after death? The Bible said after death, the judgment. He said, I quote, and as it is appointed the man wants to die. But after death, the judgment. Are you listening? Followed by saying in chapter 20, verse 12, and I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. You ain't doing nothing, you have seen nothing. My friends, my Bible tells me that no matter whether you die or how you die, you have an appointment to meet the great around the great white throne. All of us have an appointment to meet around the great white throne. Children, your father is gone now. Your mother is gone now. Your brother 
what's going on. They all had an appointment to eat. Can I tell you that none of them could have stand before God for, for you. They can't stand before God for you. You must stand before God for yourself and give an account for the deeds you have done. Now you are listening to me. You can't stand on your mother's faith. You cannot stand on your grandfather's faith. You have to stand for yourself. All of us have to stand for ourselves. Now, there are some religious folks that may tell you, and you are right, they will say, Live it up. You have fun here on earth. For when you die, the grave is your final destination. Some people will tell you that. They even say that there is no heaven or hell. And some of us buy into that pit. We can just enjoy life and we die that time. Some people do that. But members of this brave family, and all of you who are under the sound of my voice today, I want you to understand that the Bible does not teach that. For Revelation 20, verse 13 and 15 say, And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. This tells me that all persons who died at sea and was eaten by sea creatures have to be given up on that appointed day. You better understand, death and hell deliver up the dead which were in there. And they were all judged, every man according to their work. Can't be judged for me. I can't be judged for you. Are you listening to me? My brothers and sisters, we are here this afternoon. That was afternoon to say our final goodbyes to the patriarch of the church. One who lived out his prescribed numbers of a lot of years. How much that was? Two score and ten and three. And I am not going to tell you to do not weep. I cannot tell you that. But like the Apostle Paul said, we with hope, we with assurance that if your father lived right and died right, and if you live right and die right, you'll see him again. Come on, give God some praise in this house. Yes, I'm told. That Brother Johnson began his life of training in 1945. And between 45 and 2019, there is a dash. You all see the dash. That dash contains all the things he had accomplished on his journey. Yes, his entire life is wrapped up in that dash. His joys and his pains. His successes and his failures. His quest for God is wrapped up in that dash. His quest for companionship and mighty living is wrapped up in that dash. Are you listening? Every aspect of his life is wrapped up in that dash. That's why the writer said, Lord, teach us to number our days. Church, Brother Johnson could not change his appointment, nor could he have canceled or rescheduled his appointment. Are you listening? By Almighty God, his appointment was set by Almighty God. God saw his condition, you know. Then he dispatched the dead intro from heaven's glory. Hallelujah. He passed the glittering stars, passed the silvery horn and the shining sun, down that road, that angel road, and then he came to Princess Margaret Hospital Intensive Care Unit. Are you listening to me? Where Harold Sidney Johnson lay, even though he was not responding to man's request, he welcomed death as a friend. Church of the Lord, John Pujay said,
my thing in our guarantee is. Uh, guess what? Someone said to you, you know what? I believe Brother Johnson is standing in the bandstand of glory with all our great crowd of witnesses. And he said to you all, he said to you all, and he said, don't give up the fight. I'm 
process of making plans to travel abroad. Anybody traveling uh, so on? Let me see the hand of those who are traveling so on. They're traveling abroad so on. All right. The first thing we do is to check our documents to see if they are current or up to date. to get them in order. Am I not right, church? Yes, in doing that, it may require some sacrifices. If you don't believe me, ask one of my daughters who had to make four or five trips to the passport office to secure a document for a sacrifice. church. The second thing you must do is confirm our reservation. I want you to take the time to listen to me in this. Let me ask you, if the final flight from Wife to Glory was taking place today, how many of us have revenue documents to travel? Thirdly, you would have to purchase our tickets in advance to avoid high price and cancellation. Fourthly, we must present ourselves to the airport on the confirmed date and time and be on time to be checked on a board of flight unless you'll see the back of the plane. Finally, we will be taken to our destination. My brothers and sisters, so it is as we traveled from earth to glory. We must have our heavenly passport stamped in the blood of the Lamb. Or a ticket sealed in his blood. That blood that was shed on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Someone said that blood that will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest point. It flows to the lowest of the blood that Jesus shed will never, never lose its power. This discourse today is meeting or divine appointment. Meeting or divine appointment. The scripture says, and it is appointed unto man once to die. I believe the writer of the book of Hebrews looked at Christ's sacrificial death as complete sacrifice for remission of sin. This sacrifice was offered once and for all, never of be offered again. For it was perfect and need not repeat. Verses 27 to 28 speaks of the death. The death of man and the death of Christ. The death of man is stated that after death, there is a judgment. So then, my friends, we must be careful how we live while we are alive. For we have an appointment with the great judge of the universe. An appointment we cannot share with our brother or our sister. Sister Johnson, can I share with your brother? Can I share with Nobody. Therefore, it is our duty to live a life that is pleasing to God. So our name would be recalled in the book which Revelation spoke about. Yes, these books, there is no room church for error. Because some of us, when we read in the book, we may go again error. Or wrong information. For these books are kept by the Lamb himself. So family of Brother Johnson. This tells me that there cannot be any type of mistake. Brother Johnson's record cannot be mistaken for his son's record, nor his wife's record. Secondly, the death of Christ. The death of man and the death of Christ are mentioned together to bring out the fact 
that Christ's offering himself will never be repeated. Someone asked, what is death? What is death? And what do you know? Well, I believe death is a ceasing to be what we were before. I pray we are kindled, and at the end of an arc or stage of life, we are put out. To me, death is another name of continuous. Discontinuous doesn't mean you no longer. That, that to me, that's what that is. Yes, when that comes, a final breath is dissolved. Then it is separation time, separation time. Our body is separated from our soul. Our body goes to the dust. Our soul goes. If you live right, go with the Lord. If you live, by the way, you go to the south. That's what the boy said. Huh? The, other, the body returned to dust. I said Ecclesiastes 12 and 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Now don't get this wrong now. Not all spirits will return to God. If you only live right, that spirit will return to God. Huh? You don't get that? Don't say, well, that's what the Bible would say. The spirits will return to God, but it ain't mean like that. Now I'm closing. And as I bid you good day. Let us look at the safety of the event. The safety of the event. It is appointed unto man. It is appointed unto man. This is a future assignment to every one of us. Or future assignment. The seed of death was sown in our very nature. He said, we may be able to run from ourselves, but not death. The real family, death is an appointment. We all must keep. And I really take the time because I want you to understand this. It is a journey which we will travel only once. Death is a way where we shall never return. Therefore, I want the song of the Lamb to all under the sound of my voice today. Let us be ready when Jesus come or call. Don't you want to hear the master say, well done, my child. You fought a good fight, come on by. Your labor is ended. Don't you want to hear him say that? Will I say to uh, Brother Johnson, sleep on Brother Johnson. Sleep on and take your rest. Your children and your family love you, but our Father loves you best. And one writer said, I'll meet you in the morning, just inside the eastern gate. Then be ready, faithful pilgrim, lest with you it be too late. Then he said, if you hear you on the glory, linger there the eastern gate. For I'm coming in the morning, she will not have long to wait. Now, I ain't know many of you all, all, all say that, because you all won't go now. But, 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 but that's what the song say. I'm coming in the morning. It says, keep your lamps all trim and burning. Yeah. So did the word serve God. For the bridegroom, watch and wait. He'll be with us at the beginning just inside the eastern gate. And so I just say to you, as he said, all the joy, you put on a meeting that will be, of that meeting, with the saints who for us wait. What a blessed happy meeting, just inside the eastern gate. When you know all those who've gone before us, no matter
Betty are now of the family. You have the awesome responsibility to help to guide your siblings in the right way. Now, church cannot save you, but it's now for you to find a church home so that you can say, this is my church. Sister Johnson, I know you were with your father when your mother died and you came in. Got a chance to do some things. You didn't obey him. But now, you, you think about it. Wherever God is leading you, find some place to call your church home. Amen. That's my word, uh, information. God bless you. God keep you. Amen.